I am headed down to a little tour of the icebreaker, US Coast Guard icebreaker. It's right down the hill there. It arrived yesterday, last night, anchored up. So we're gonna go take a little tour and uh, see how those guys live in there. They come out of Seattle. They've been on board for months to get here. So they're glad to be uh, on solid. Just about to board our Coast Guard vessel, take our little tour. You can see how big that ship is from here. These are their dive chambers right here. Are there divers? And a basketball court. I just said that's Draw the thickness of the hole of the ship that and breaks the going. ice. You know, as we're getting our lunch, we can see where we're at. Oh, that's always nice. So, Australia. Anyways, 150 permanent crew. But what's weird about this boat is we have a lot of like TDY people, so temporary people. So we'll have a lot of engineers who are just here to work on the boat. Uh, they don't stand watch. All they do is just work on the boat. We have civilians. Have uh, people who are building the next generation of icebreakers on this boat so they can take notes, see what works, what doesn't, and they pass it off to the teams that are building our new icebreakers. Uh, How many icebreakers are there? There's not a lot. We only have uh, two one that goes up, up into the uh, North Pole, and then us that comes down to the South Pole. Our sister ship, the Polar Sea, used to do the same thing, but that one's been decommissioned and we kind of uh, cannibalize it. So we pull parts from the Polar Sea put on this boat. Because this boat was officially decommissioned. It was dead, but they brought it back to life to do this mission. Wow. So this boat is very, very important. So you guys know. <laughs> it was recommissioned pretty recently, right? It was in the 90s. Oh, it was in the 90s. Something okay. like that. Don't quote me on that, but um, yes, it was recommissioned. How old is it? It was commissioned in 1976. I believe it was late in 72. But officially commissioned 76, they retired it sometime around. And then they brought it back to life. And uh, they're putting a lot of money into it. So it looks great. Prepared to So if we have a fire, if we have flooding on board, this is where we would respond from. Okay, so we have the forward, forward part of the ship, that's where we are. We're in the most forward part. Okay, so we have your helmets right here. Alright, you can see right here, this is repair tube. Where we keep all of our extra hoses, you know, all of our tools, our access and overhaul kits to kind of like break up the embers. We have all of our plugging and patching kits in case we have flooding or something ruptured. That's where we get it all from. Okay. So we'll be there in one second. But uh, it's also doubles at our uh, cardio room. So you can see we have treadmills and our stair masters. This room right here, this is our anchor windless room, aka the gym. should uh, consider yourself lucky as I actually forgot to tell my last tour about this one. <laughs> so sorry to them. I apologize. But this is a uh, Polar Starbucks right here. <laughs> oh. right. It also doubles as our gym. All right. So you got to be really careful when you're working out in here, especially when you're trying to do a bench press and we have, you know, 12 foot seats. <laughs> <laughs> So really, if you're here when you're breaking ice, you're noticeable. No, no, it's actually a lot worse when we're in rough seas. Mm -hmm. When we're in the ice, everything's vibrating, so it's like you're in a, a bigger weight. So imagine you're trying to drink water, and mm -hmm. everything vibrating. But when we're out at sea, that's when it's a little more dangerous. So it's, 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 
that's all you guys have. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My whole uh, pick a good movie, you know, we'll have a movie night out here. Um, usually we're out, we'll pick something. You know, kind of just depends. Everyone grabs their popcorn, grabs their drinks. So it's a good time in here. I mean, is that actually a functional wheel? Uh, there? Right now, no. But underway, yes. I mean, so, it is. Yes. Wired. Yeah, so usually it'll be a uh, non ranked, and you'll have your OD, your officer of the day, uh, standing right here, telling the helmsman where to go, giving commands, uh, controlling. And is he looking at a screen, or is he looking out the window? Or? Uh, mixture of everything. Yeah. A mixture of everything. So we have a set course that we have to follow, and the, it's the OD's job to set that course and to follow. Helm some jobs to listen to the OD. OD controls everything. All right, they control the ship. They're in touch with the EOW, who's down below in main control. So they're always in communication with each other, uh, getting the engines up to speed, stopping the engines. You know, if there's a casualty. You know, there's constant communication going on between both. So very important. This is what the lookout uses to communicate with the helmsman uh, right here. So we have someone stand up top. And uh, if we have any contacts, if, I don't know, there's a ship coming towards us, he'll use this to tell us uh, what's going on here. Yeah. Those are the captain's chairs. Only the captain is allowed to sit in those. Uh, Which ones? These right here. These chairs right here. Like uh, our gyro compass or something will serve by magnetic. Otherwise, we'll give like an 